Douglas Church. Um, today I'm going to talk to you guys about pain, the exciting subject of pain. Um, I've been thinking about pain a lot lately because um, I'm taking some classes that focus on uh, pastoral counseling and systems theory and I mean we talk about grief and loss and we do some like uh, role plays that have to do with that sort of thing. So it's been keeping that kind of idea at the top of my mind. Um, what else? I mean, there's a lot of other things going on, um, whatever, personally and mentally. But uh, one of the things that ended up coming up out of this whole thing was I started, like, looking back on some events in my life that I kind of, like, brushed them off and didn't really think of them as painful. But then... In the class, when they talk about the things like, this makes people depressed, and this is what makes people feel like this and that. I was like, man, I went through that, I went through this. And, you know, I, I try not to diagnose myself when I take these classes, but, you know, it's not that, uh, it's kind of difficult not to think about it. And so, I started, like, looking back on some of the events in my life, and uh, I started saying to myself, if the event popped up in my head during the readings or anything like that, I would say, well, that must have hurt. Because I'm trying to like cultivate um, empathy and compassion with myself. Because sometimes I push myself through stuff that I would tell other people, you know, take a break or something. But I'll push myself through it. So I basically started looking back on some things. And I started feeling pretty sad, man. I'm not even going to lie about it. Some stuff that I, I probably could have used a hug. But uh, at any rate, I'm grateful for uh, Jesus in my life. Because without that, well, who knows who I'd be. But um, one of the things I wanted to point you guys to was Matthew uh, 26, 36 through 46, which is the uh, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he was feeling a might bit low. Because it actually says in there that he said that he was sorrowful even unto death. And that's sad. I mean, I was feeling sad because I started thinking about how some kids ran my puppy off or my dog off when I was a kid, they threw some rocks at it and it ran away when I was uh, when I was at home, and that's sad. But Jesus, was, yeah, I wasn't sorrowful to death. And then I thought about how this is sad too. One time, man, if you see this video, girl, you gotta think about that. Anyway, once upon a time, I used to like this girl, and I really was like, I know this girl likes me, but she kept acting like she didn't, and I was like, what's wrong with me? Why do I think this girl likes me? when obviously she doesn't I mean she doesn't really actually act like she likes me and then we ended up in this situation where it was just the two of us and she said Pedro I gotta tell you something I said what's that I like you oh really yeah I've been liking you for a long time oh okay and she said but I just don't want people to uh, get in our business or because I know if people know that I like you then they're gonna be like Oh, you like Pedro, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, you talk to other people. And she's like, I know, but I don't want them to know. And I said, I said, man, why you got to care what other people think? That's kind of whack of you. And then I said, she said, well, you know what? I'm not going to care what people think. So later, we were on, this was like a field trip of sorts. So we were on the bus, and the girl decided to sit next to me. And then people said, ooh. And to her credit, she just sat there. Then she laid her head on my shoulder. And they were like, ooh, I knew you liked this one particular dude. was like, yeah, I knew you liked him. I knew you liked him. And uh, then all of a sudden, she turned on me, man, like a Judas. And she said, I don't like him. I just got a headache. And then she said, Pedro, you're supposed to be so spiritual and, and supposed to be so, um, what's it called, a gentleman. Why don't you let me have your seat so I can lay down? And I said, there ain't no other seats. And then she said, well, you can't sit on the floor or something? And I was like. I can't believe she asked me this. And I did what looks like a punk move, but for me wasn't at the time, was I sat on the floor. And I was sitting on the floor, and it's like this belt buckle or something was sitting was on the floor, and I sat on it, it was hurting my butt. And I said, but I said to my mind, I said, man, remember this feeling. Because if you ever get in a situation like this again, you got to be able to see it coming. You knew she was scared to say she liked you. So now she uh, she pulled the Judas on you. Never forget it. So I was pretty sad, but I wasn't sorrowful unto death. So all this to say is that Jesus must have been hurting in a real bad way for them to say, or for them to say that he said, 
I'm sorrowful unto death. And so I started thinking back on different times of my life, and by God's grace, I haven't really been sorrowful unto death, but I have been feeling pretty low sometimes in life. But the way I look at it is the power of uh, the Jesus story is that even when you feel so low, like he felt, sorrowful unto death, there is a peace that surpasses all understanding that we have access to. Because even after he prayed three times and said, God, is there any way I can get out of this? And it didn't work out that way. And his homeboys, who were supposed to have his back, kept falling asleep and everything like that. He still had it in his heart to be able to uh, tell, advise Peter not to live by the sword, to heal the ear, to do who uh, Peter chopped his ear off and to forgive the people on the cross. So all that to say is grief and pain and sorrow is going to come up in life, but we do have something stronger because as it is also written, greater is the one that's in you than the one that's in the world. So it's the one of us that's in the world it goes to a bunch of junk and sometimes feels like, man, I can't take it. I'm sorrowful, even unto death. But that one, that true one that lives within us, that Christ spirit, that Christ consciousness that's within all of us is greater than all that. So at the end of the day, whether you lost your puppy or a girl dissed you, or even if you got to go to the cross by yourself, there's a peace within you that's bigger than all that. So hopefully you can touch that. And, you know, whatever. We'll see.